Open up your brown book, baby. It's for you, it's for us. The fantasies, no one can judge us, no one can judge us. This is for us. Open up your brown book, baby. Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Shay, baby, and welcome to another episode here of the Brown Book Series. Oh my God, so tonight, y'all know I'm a freak all day, twice on Sundays, and a lot on like late Friday nights. And so when I'm in my bed, you know, want to find a little something, something to get into, <laughs> Fiona Cole, yo, <laughs> she has the Voyeur um, series. Yeah, we're just going to have to talk to her about that. So go tell your friends. Let them know it's Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. The Brown Book Series is on. And tonight we have the USA Today's bestseller author, Miss Fiona Cole. So, uh, you know, y'all know what to do. See what we drinking. Come right back. Brown Book Series presents Raw. 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 Romance readers and writers experience. Save the date. October 28th and 29th, 2022. Brown Book Series presents Raw. Romance readers and writers experience. October 28th and 29th, 2022. At the Western Old Town of Alexandria. Featuring some of your favorite romance authors. Brenda Jackson. Beverly Jenkins. Iris Bowley. Deborah Fletcher Mello, and so much more. The Raw Experience will include book signings, meet and greet, photo ops, vendors, shopping, surprise celebrity guests, and live performances. Registration is wide open at brownbookseries.com. Save the date, October 28th and 29th, 2022. Brown Book Series presents R R R R A A W W R Experience. And we are back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the for the first time here at the Brown Book Series, USA Today and Amazon's top 30 best-selling author, Miss Fiona Cole. Hey Fiona! Hey. <laughs> How are you, darling? I'm good. You're good, girl. What's going on with you over there, honey? <laughs> I'm just hanging out, you know, living the best life I can. <laughs> I understand that. I totally understand that. Now, Fiona, before we get into your nasty ass books, girl, <laughs> and all the life that it gives me, <laughs> I, girl, whoo, please tell everybody a little bit about um, Fiona Cole. What is it in a day in the life? What is it like? You know, just being Fiona. I love your name, too. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, I want to say it's extravagant. And, you know, it can be. But yeah. mostly, I have two girls. Uh, oh, wow. Nine and four. Eight and 14. Goodness. Eight and 14. Oh, wow. Pray for me. I'm praying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm married to my military husband. Um and a day in the life is kind of just getting up with my coffee and, you know, getting the kids ready and then coming down to my office, which is a work in progress, um, mm -hmm. and starting to do some work. I try to get some work in and I'm at the house. So, of course, you get pulled away from that and everything. But I'm just a mom and an author and just and making a, every day work. And a, and a military wife. Yes. <laughs> so, girl, you traveling from place to place. Do you ever just be like, ah, where are we going to live? We're going to tie moving. You know, we got really lucky with ours. So, we only moved twice. And oh, so, we lived in one place for 10 years. And then oh, we moved wow. to North Carolina for three years. And now we're going to finish out our time back where we started in uh, Tennessee. So, and we've only got like two years left. So, we are. We are in our final place right now. But I will say those moves, they were they were a lot. They it was like hope. compounded. <laughs> I, so when you where you are now, so okay, once it's over with, two years, bam, are you gonna stay in Tennessee or are you like, I'm out of here? Listen, that's that's the debate between my husband and I. <laughs> I'm on your side. Tell your husband, I side with Fiona. <laughs> I'll let them know. I'm signing a petition now. <laughs> yeah, girl. I'll tell you, we'll pass that bitch around, honey, because we tell you. What's he like? You know, I love it here, and but I love Cincinnati. That's my home. But 
like I said, this last move and the house we moved into, we're doing a lot of work. So we're going to be here for a little bit, but we'll see. We'll see who wins the battle royale at the end of this. Girl, you will win this. I'm telling you. I tell him we're going to write a book about his ass and cut him <laughs> off or something. Tell him don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to be the marriage with two houses. Oh, I like that. Oh, my God. I'm coming to your house. I don't know that. <laughs> this house is going to be boring. Ain't no, you know, good, good, good books at his house. We don't want to go over there. But it will be some military friends over there. I don't know, Fiona. I might be split. I mean, I can, I can be objective. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Yo, Fiona, writing. When did you know that writing was your thing? Oh, my goodness. Uh, not until later. I, oh. If you would have asked me before 26, if I'd ever write a book, I'd be like, God, no, I hate writing. Um, I love to read. And I picked up romance books when I was in college because I was a biochem major in college. I saw that old smart ass. <laughs> but, I mean, I ended up being a stay-at-home mom I um, and I got into reading and I we you know we didn't have a lot of money so I found out that like you could review books and you get them for free so I loved it <laughs> and so I kind of just fell headfirst into this world of romance and kind of getting to know authors I started beta reading and I started getting to know more authors I started a blog and at one point I kind of just had this story that was constantly in my head and I kind of started writing it. And even when I wrote that, I was like, this is the only book I'm ever going to write. I'm never going to write again, blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, I just kind of kept writing because it's crazy up here and I got a lot of stuff going on. So I needed to get it down. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. Now, are you a, um, the hell no, you can't be. Wait, let me think. Are you a published author? I mean, like a uh, traditionally published, or are you? I was about to say, girl, because they, 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 they would never. No. <laughs> <And I'm, laughs> Where well, I am independently published. Okay. That's why I like. I knew that before I even answered. <laughs> so, okay. So, once you start reading everybody's books, you're like, okay, cool, doing your reviews and everything. And you're like, fuck it, I'm going to write this book. And but because you already knew which how to like the editing process and all that good stuff, right? Because you gotten it from knowing the authors. Yeah, I had you know, I kind of made friends with authors, and it's such a cool community. And so many people like offered me advice and help mm -hmm. and everything. And it was just kind of amazing how to start. I mean, a lot of it I've learned a lot over the years, but in the beginning I had a lot of help. I mean, there's no way I would have been able to keep going if I didn't know as much as people had shared with me. So it was, and you know, honestly, it was an author when I was a blogger. This was the, like, the final straw is this author. Uh, when I wrote a review, she was like, you should write. I love your reviews. I like the way you write. You should write. And it was such a, like, a throwaway comment. Like, I right. put it I did it, you know. That's so what's I always, up. I always say, say the compliment. You never know how it's going to change someone's life. That's what's that. That's true. Now, when you, okay, girl. So, like, what was, like, the, the, the final moment that you was like, okay, I'm reading this book. I've uploaded it. Let me hit send. Like, what, oh, <laughs> what, gosh. what was in your mind? What was you going through? I was so anxious. And, you know. And honestly, like that never goes away. There's never a moment I could say I'm anxious from just this latest book, just as much as like the first book. Right. Um, it's, I had, I tried to keep realistic expectations, you know, but as you get to know people, you're like, don't compare. Cause you see those people that are like, I published my first book and now I'm like number one. And you're like, what? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And of course you're always hoping for it. You're like, I'm not going to hope for it, but really I'm hoping for it. Right. <laughs> and I sold 19 books on my opening day and I was so pumped. 10 of them were friends, but I was so excited. I know that the sale counts. It don't matter. It counts. You know, I always remember that moment and how grateful I was. I was so excited when I broke into the top 10,000 with that first book. I mean, it's, it's exciting to see how far you've come. So I try to remember how excited I was 
when I first published and like those small goals that felt huge at the time. So I, love it. I absolutely love it. Now, how long does it take you to write a book? <sighs> it, depends. <laughs> it depends. So obviously with like the pandemic and everything, I was homeschooling. So that took me a little bit longer yeah. to write books. Yeah, home, <laughs> um, homeschooling me, but... <laughs> I would teachers need a raise. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to be an advocate for teachers now. They need a raise because them little badass kids. <laughs> girl, I was homeschooling my little cousin, and I was like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah, no. Mm-mm. I had a seventh grader that was mostly independent, but that first grader. Yeah. That's I had a kindergarten. I'm like, he had more homework than the big kid. I'm like, what the whole hell? It's, it's ridic- it was ridiculous. I ended up having to write in the morning. So if I would have written in the afternoon after homeschooling, I would have murdered people. Girl, I'm telling you. <laughs> I said, I, 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 I started drinking more in the pandemic. <laughs> he, used be, he used to call me mama. So he was like, then I got a 13 year old. But he was like, Ma, you can't be talking to the teacher with the glass of wine in your hand. I'm like, oh. Watch me. Watch me. I show up to parent teacher conferences with like, um, like one of those insulated mugs. I was like, it's yeah. coffee. <laughs> Girl, I'm telling you, because that, that that homeschooling was just, uh, and I felt, I thought about you authors. I'm like, damn. Boy, yeah, it's, I mean, it's slowed down. But I mean, usually my process, if I pan it out and I like keep to a schedule, which I'm not fantastic at, but I try to, it still takes me about four to six months to write a book just because I have, I've tried to like compact it um, mm. and start overlapping, but like I really, I always go back to what I know. And that's kind of just the timeline. I can like pan it out exactly how it is. So between betas and proofreading and editing, it's, I mean, honestly, I could probably write a book if push came to shove, which usually it does because I procrastinate. I can finish a book in like a month. But <laughs> You're in your zone. I can see that. Because some authors, like one author, she said, I asked her, how you know, quick can she write a book? She was like, I was on a seven hour road trip and I finished the book by the time it was over. I was like, what the hell? Damn. What was going on that road trip? Right. I can't sit still for seven hours. Girl, listen, I can't. My mind go. I could be sitting here for an hour and I'm <laughs> I didn't finish nothing. I started. I do, I do something called, I mean, it's pretty common called POMS where Mm -hmm. you do like write for 20 or 30 minutes and take a five minute break. Um, And I get up and I, I dance. I just dance (laughs) to Just got to be active for a little bit and then sit back down and start writing again. But it's good. I absolutely love it. That's what's up. Speaking (laughs) of writing, it brings us to the first segment here at the Brown Book Series called Name That Book. Will we take a synopsis, um, a character's name, or something related to one of your books, and you have to name that book? Oh, gosh. Yeah, girl. (laughs) Now you have a few series. So um, if we give you a character's name, we're talking, you know, whatever book they're they're, they're at the star of, you know. So we like, cool. Put my glasses on because everybody knows I cannot see, girl. Oh, (laughs) the struggles of it all. All right. You ready, Miss Fiona? Yes. All right, first up, name that book. Ramsey is like, wait, Shay, my bad, Rams. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Fiona is like, get to it. Okay. Get on our level. <laughs> okay. Da- Girl, I'm, I'm, I'm changing my mind. I'm back to your house now. I'm going to stay at your house. <laughs> back at your house. <laughs> All right, here we go. Name that book. It started as a night to forget my past hurts. I just wanted to watch to lose myself and my uncle's illicit club. Ooh. I want to say it's Watch With Me, which is the Yes! Watch With Me, girl! I want to watch too, honey. I got lost in my uncle's illicit club. I said, ooh. I loved it. That's my backup right. plan. That's right, right girl. <laughs> Gee, that's the part A and B plan. Let me see. <laughs> All right. Name that book. 
Ah, uh, but when one thing after the next goes wrong, they begin to wonder if they'll ever get to say their I do's. Make it to the altar. Make it to the altar. Girl, I didn't think it was gonna make it to the do the I do's either. Because this is <laughs> this is the second book. There's only two books in this series. So the first one's when he met and all that other good stuff. And then this is the second book. I love this series. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Um, make it to the altar and the one before that. The shame. 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 Yeah. Yes, that is probably so. Make it to the altar is like a companion novella. It's kind of like an extended epilogue kind of thing. Right. Um, I love Kevin and Anna. They have like a really soft spot, soft spot in my heart because it was probably the first book I wrote where I really found my voice as an author of kind of this taboo kind of like taking something familiar so they the whole book is kind of like this discovery into power exchange they are girl next door friends to lovers and it starts in high school as friends in their senior year they both realize you know that he's very dominant and kind of a sadist and she's a masochist and submissive and you know he's been taught his whole life be a gentleman be good to girls never hurt them and she's been taught have them treat you like a lady and all this stuff and they have these desires that they're kind of contending with right. because when i wrote this i was like you know we get to see these bds and we get to see these very dominant men which i love and Oof. it's kind of like how did they get there what was it like discovering that and so that's kind of shame which was shaming not at first, but then I got banned on Amazon. Um, Wait, you got <laughs> <laughs> shame not at first was the name of it. Shame me not was the first title, but it got banned on Amazon, and I yeah. could not. I don't really know. I think there was like because I put a warning on the back of it back in the day when like warnings were kind of the thing to do and it said underage consensual sexual activities and I think there was just kind of this algorithm going through and oh. they pulled it and I couldn't get a hold of anybody to put it back on so I somebody just renamed hating. it slapped it back up there somebody was, somebody was hating okay yes. <laughs> so, but yeah so they go through this it's like a 10 year span and you know they really go through different phases of their life and they always find their way back to each other and just kind of connect with each other and then make it to the altars kind of their way to get to the things just kind of keep bumbling along. It's kind of supposed to be a little bit lighter and funnier and, but yeah. also kind of this characters that I just, I wanted to revisit. I'm glad you did too, girl. Cause I was reading a book, right? And I was like, she need him to just, tell her what to do real quick. Like she needs, you know what I'm saying? Like she wants that. I just felt like she did want that. She wants that <laughs> dominance. She want, you know, even though they, like you said, they both had the, he was, you know, taught to treat her like a lady, all that good stuff. And she was like, oh, let him treat me like a lady and all that shit. But no girl, she wanted that rough shit. She, I was like, yes. yes. <laughs> I wanted it. And I was here for it. I was like, yes, yes girl. I was here for all that. All right, next up, name that book. A game of truth or dare leads to a wild night in a relationship that has all of our feelings growing into something bigger than any of us intended. Oh, God. Girl. Oh, I know that's been the bottle. Truth or dare. Honey. Truth or dare, honey. She's oh, like I know. Lovers. <laughs> Girl. Yes. That was one of my favorite scenes. Yes. <laughs> I was like, okay. Now, <laughs> you know, I'm cool with the whole LGBTQ, you know, plus I'm down, my friends, my family, I'm down by law. <laughs> but it's, but sometimes when you're reading that, it, it don't be good. It's like some people try to do, try to overly do it, and it don't come off good. It don't come off as love. Yeah. Or it don't come, you know, it just come off as some old, you know, pushy, too much. Yeah. But bad, bad. <laughs> Not these right here. And that girl, I was like, they gonna sleep with that girl too. I was over it. <laughs> like, this is so wonderful. <laughs> I loved writing that book. That was a lot of fun to write. 
Girls, what made you write this type of book? Um, I love, 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 love male, male, female romances. And I especially love kind of when someone doesn't realize that they're gay or homosexual and then they kind of meet this guy and all of a sudden they're like, they have to kind of accept this. And I love the tension that it creates. It was girl. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey has shit on this. I was like, the Fiona. What are you doing over in this military base? The girl. I was like, I was here for all of it. I never really got into what um the male and male, female who blah because you know the ones I read. I'm just like, man. But girl, this right here, as the young folks said, had me wide open. I was, <laughs> I wanted to see this on a movie somewhere. I was like, girl, what is the Cinemax after dark of it all? <laughs> I love it. I mean, and it's funny because when I wrote it, I won't give away the ending, but I intended for it to end differently. And it didn't end the way I thought it would. It kind of like, I was like, I was trying to push it in that direction, but it never quite felt right. So I kind of had to adjust. Right. So. um you know, and again, it was kind of a throwaway comment from a reader that was like, you should write a male, male romance. And when I was writing Boyer, I just threw Jackson in there and was like, maybe we'll see where it goes. And I was going with it. It went everywhere. I was like, <laughs> I loved it, girl. I was like, oh, she did that. Because it just, you know, I don't know. A lot of people can't write that. They're just, you know, and some people, I don't know. Even one person I know, that was right writing it wasn't romance for him though but he was like in that type of relationship male on male and female or whatever mm -hmm. but even his writing i'm like dude i don't know what it is I'm like this is not good what are you <laughs> doing i was like take you out of it and just make it a fix do something it was just something yeah i was like you know it's too much i'm like your love life is boring i want to hear about yours <laughs> but, you know spice this stuff up and I like this one because love is the banter was just oh girl. I loved it. I mean, I had fun with it. And it was just I want I was nervous, of course, because you want to do justice and you know respect everything that's going on. And but it was there's always a scary part of writing something like you don't really know or really feel comfortable with. And so I'm glad the you know, kind of the return I got on it. And I, I mean, I loved it. I want to write another one and you should, <laughs> you should maybe, um, girl, yes. Send me that one. Cause you did good. You did good on this. That's all right. Miss Fiona. All right. Name the book character. Luella King. Oh, um, where you can find me. Where you can find me. When did this book come out? I always get confused. 2000. 15, I think okay. 16, I think it's 15, okay. 2015. All right. Now, is this your first book or what number of books is this? Very first book. This is the very first book. I thought so. I was like, hey, see, that's when I figured out um, where you can find me. Since this is your first book, tell us a little bit about where you can find me. So I really, if I ever step outside of the romance genre, I really like reading suspense. So I love mm -hmm. romantic suspense. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of, um, usually when I write a book, there's these like scenes that I have and I kind of have to connect the dots almost. And I just really wanted to write this romantic suspense. And I had these certain scenes, like the club scene where it starts out and just kind of hopefully a shock factor um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know she meets this guy at a bar and she's kind of reserved um and but she meets him and she kind of starts exploring with him and he's a detective who is searching for the serial killer um and it kind of goes from there girl i was like but well, that's to be your first book i was like oh she did that <laughs> i was like she did that all right Name that book. <laughs> Fuck no. I love bacon. Oh, gosh. Is that... Um, is that the... Blame it on the vodka? 
That is blame it on the vodka. Here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, she got blame on the vodka, and it's so crazy because now what? But the first one I read was blame it on the champagne, champagne, I think. Yes, and then blame it on tequila, and I was like, because when I read blame it on champagne, I was like, she gonna have to do the vodkas and the tequilas, and then girl, and then there you came. Oh yeah, your latest release, blame it on the vodka. Tell us a little bit about uh this book. So Blame It on the Vodka is a friends to lovers. Um, and she's kind of like this sassy heroine, this ballsy heroine, mm-hmm. and um, very Samantha from Sex in the City. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and kind of what we see from Austin throughout the series is he's more bashful a little bit. We see a lot of blushing. She likes to taunt him, and he's like, oh, stop. But they're right. really close friends. And he's like her Instagram boyfriend, but they're just really good friends. But he's loved her since the day he met her. Um, But, and she's always like, let's sleep together. Let's sleep together. He's like, no. And it kind of becomes this running joke. Well, he's her date to their friend's wedding in Vegas. And then they get really drunk and they wake up married. (laughs) So they have to kind of feel that. And she's this, um, a political daughter. And so, and she's this socialite. So she gets, it gets splashed across the news and her dad asked her to kind of play this off. And so they kind of have to pretend to be married. This marriage is real. And of course, throughout that process, he's like, this is my chance to show her that I can be this man. Cause she's like, I'm never getting married. I don't ever want to be married. Never. And she kind of starts seeing the side, the benefits of being married and liking it, liking Austin. So, and we find out Austin is um, not quite so bashful. Yeah. Listen, when she kept playing with uh, Austin, I said, oh, he's going to rock her world. <laughs> you think she wanted? She don't. She kept on playing. And, and I'm like, I felt bad for a hot minute because I was like, damn, he really loved her, and she go push, play him to the left, and I was like, okay. And then, you know, fucking around with you, Fiona, I was like, honey, is a man gonna pop up and then rock his world? So, you know, I just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I started thinking about men from your other books. I'm like, no, <laughs> this man can show up right now and be like, fuck <laughs> you, in the office. But it didn't go that way, and I was like, okay. So I was alright with that, too. But uh, it once they got together, I was like, ooh, ooh. Yeah, fun. you kind of find out that Austin's like blushing because he there's this one scene that was my favorite. He's like, "You think I'm blushing because I can't handle you?" Yes. But it's like I'm wondering, you know, of all the things that I would do, and wondering if you could handle me. That's it. I'm like, I ain't blushing for you, but I'm, bl- I'm blushing for you because you yeah. about to just lose your mind. <laughs> I was like, he, and I didn't take he was when she said he's blushing. I was like, girl, he laughing at your ass because he was like, girl, when I get a hold to you, it's gonna be so ugly. I was here for all of it, all of it. Fiona, author's moments. What's your most urgent priority for the rest of the year, both in the literary world and in your personal life? Oh, um, finish this office is right now a <laughs> personal life. I like, I want a place to sit and like, feel like I can come and work. I've never had this before. You know, that was always my kitchen table. So uh, I have this office and this quiet space that's mine. I'm kind of excited about. Um, For literary urgent priority, um, goodness, I have have a few, I guess. Um, Priority first one is I need to get my signed paperback form open. Because I haven't done it in a year, and I'm just, I need to get it done. Okay. Um, but otherwise, like I, I'm, I'm working on a new, kind of new series, but it's connected in characters okay. that we know. Okay. We've met. Okay. Okay. So, um, I would like to publish that this year. Okay, girl. I'm gonna be looking for. I'm look. You know, I'm be looking for it too, honey. Like, what's going on over here? I love it. Now I'm be wondering which characters is coming back. Okay. <laughs> All these moments in being a novelist. What did you learn a little too late? Oh, 
don't compare yourself. Don't try to do what people are doing. Well, don't compare yourself because you don't know what they're doing. True. So True. It took me a long time to kind of piece that together of like, well, they're publishing this book. They're a newer author. Why am I? And it's like, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Right. So that was kind of, that was a big thing to learn. Well, at least you learned it now. So that's all that matters. Yes. It's a good, it's a good reminder. I mean, what? so it was a good and one. Then, and they writing this shit. You writing, girl. <laughs> I've been out here. I'm synced was out here. Okay. <laughs> I miss Fiona. All right. At this moment, if you could have tea with the one fictional character of yours, who would it be? Oh, God. Oh, I don't know. Um, Which one of your characters do you want to get in the mind of? Like, hmm. I think. Um, I think. Um, I think honestly, I'd want to meet, have tea with Olivia from Liar, just because she's fun. Oh no, Ian, Ian from Another, because he's fun. He's funny. Oh, I like him. All right, you want to talk to? Ian? I want to talk to the uncle who owns that damn club. Yes, Kent. Oh no, <laughs> uncle is Daniel. The Daniel, uncle is yeah. Daniel. I Kent want to talk his to his partner. It's his partner, right? I want, I want to talk to Uncle Daniel. <laughs> I didn't want to tell me what, how to get one of these clubs started. I was, <laughs> that's what I don't tell you. All right. Off this moment, if you could sit down with your 15 year old self, what would you tell her? Um, oh, God. Um, <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, it's all going to work out, even if it's not in the way you think. Mm. I think that's what I would do. Cause you know, you set plans and you think that's what it's going to be. And it just, it's not, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's different. Gotcha. But it still works out. It still works out, girl. Yeah. Cause 15 was such a, if ugh, age, ugh. the whole ugh. world was falling apart every minute. I'm like every minute, <laughs> every minute, every second. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a mess. All right. Fiona, what would your pin name be? Fiona. <laughs> so, okay, Fiona Cole. So the first and last name is a pin name or just the first name? Both. So why did you go with a pin name? I did a pin name. So at the time when I first started writing, um, you know, my husband was military, so I was very cautious with that because right. this was seven years ago with social media. We were still very unsure. Of it. <laughs> now right. we're just like, screw it. This is my address. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and my backup plan for my degree was to um, teach science. And let okay. me tell you, I did not need that. Of being like, so Mrs. Boom, you're I right. See you also, write books <laughs> and be reading you the passage. I Ooh. love fucking bacon too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that would be awkward. And then the parents, could you imagine? <laughs> All the dads who want to talk to you, they be like, they be like, um, my dad's coming to, <laughs> they want a parent teacher conference, <laughs> a private one. They want, <laughs> they're gonna be like, so. That, that, uh, that club you wrote about, is, you know, <laughs> where did you do your research? Do you know I know. <laughs> a mess. So why the name Fiona Cole, though? Like, how did you come up with that name? Oh, God. I don't really know. <laughs> I remember my husband, he was so funny. So I ended up, I just liked Fiona. I liked that name. Right. Um, but my husband, he found this, like, pen name generator. And it was like an hour of laughter. It was like your street name and your dog's name. Yes. Before. It was like, sir, scout, scoutingtonville. It was like, what? <laughs> I 
love it. I absolutely love it. And I like it though. And I often ask people who has pen names. I'm like, yo, do you ever just be somewhere and they're calling your name and you're like, what? who are they talking to? Yes. I actually, for the first time ever, I had someone recognize me outside. And of course, it was, <laughs> I didn't look like, you know, gorgeous <laughs> or anything like, you know, you plan. Right. It was, I had just come out of a sauna. So oh, oh. I was God. a mess. <laughs> I was at the Warriors Club, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, and I'm so awkward. And I just, my mind like didn't like transition quickly enough. I felt so bad, <laughs> but it was so crazy for someone to be like, are you Fiona? And I was like, oh yeah, I am. I, <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. But well, the name suits you. I, lo I like it. Thank you. It's cool. I like it. All right. Let's see. Authors moments. If you could master any instrument on earth, what would it be? Oh, you know, probably a piano. I've always wanted to learn how to play piano. Pianos are sexy. I know. They I mean, sexy. ever since Pretty Woman, right? Yes, girl. <laughs> Let me say that's my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> Be so weird, but she was your favorite movie. I'm like everyone that knows me, not Pretty Woman is my favorite movie. They're like, "How is that your favorite movie? It's about a hooker." I'm like, "I know, but she's I know. Movie. I love." That. So when I first started reading, I read the Harlequin romance. You know, <laughs> where it was like the the waitress and the billionaire. So yes. this is basically the hooker and the billionaire. Yeah, I love it. Was it was the same <laughs> shit, right? I was like, how dare you guys look down on it? You're writing the same stuff. No. The irony of it all. I was just like, they just get on my nerves. <laughs> all right, office moments. What is the one dream that you've tucked away? Oh. Um, like. A dream that I would want to happen. Mm -hmm. that, well, yeah, you wanted to happen. He was like, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm just gonna come back to it later on, or you know. I don't know. I mean, I think I don't know if I'm saving it like a dream that I've talked away, like I have plans for, but one that I would like secretly love to see happen is like a Netflix or something like that or a movie or a series or something or one of my books kind of girl get turned into that. It would have to be on Netflix. It or, would have to be on Netflix. Girl. <laughs> I, I want to see the fullness of it. So I'm like, like Pornhub or somebody need to come up with like a Netflix thing. You know what I'm saying? Like Pornflix or something. They have like their own original movies. That yes. should be hot. Ooh, passion flicks has some pretty graphic. I yeah, like but, them. Yeah, but I need it to be like graphic, graphic. Like we need some Skinamax. The Skinamax come back. <laughs> yes, this we need. We need, you need <laughs> listen. We need to reach out to Skinamax and see <laughs> if it can go over there. Yeah, I'm telling you this. Boy, it's so wonderful. I love it. All right, office moments. What's something that you tried really hard to like, and you just like fuck this? I ugh. Oh, I tried hopefully, it. hopefully people don't come out. Historical romance. I tried. I want to. I know there's tension in it, but I have such a hard time with it. Sometimes some of it you can't follow. Uh, the, the it's like the verbiage of it. Yeah, some like, of can I get a cliff notes. <laughs> <laughs> some of you can't follow. You'd be like, what the whole hell? Because sometimes they, the, I'd be like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> now, I'm able to, it's, it's only certain ones I can follow. I can follow Beverly Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Hers is more like, it's like she's talking to me, me like I'm a six year old. Like, look, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of spelling out for me. And like, yes. you know, she's like, the reference this. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and Vanessa Raleigh has the Regency era. So sometimes yeah. I feel like when I tell people about historical, I'm like, you might want to just catch a Regency first. And then it yeah. kind of, you know, it's still historical, but it's a little different. I have a friend who lives and dies by historicals. And 
she is so funny. She's like, let me tell you about this historical. She goes, oh, and like the way she talks about it, I'm like, I want to love it like you love it. Yeah. I want to, because it looks exciting. It looks, pronouncing the name is it's, it's hard for me sometimes. I'll be like, look, I cannot. What is this person's name? Lord who? It's just like, what? <laughs> And it's like that Lord such and such as Monaco began. I'll be like, what is this? It's 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 a lot for me. Yeah, it's kind of like the sci-fi. I don't really read much sci-fi because you know, you get I tried to read my daughter this book and I was like, I cannot pronounce half these words. I'm sounding them out it. like we are learning. I'm like Sarah, like that rule that you said. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, I'm like, yo, if I can't pronounce, if I can't understand it, I can't read the book. I just like, I don't, I be trying, I'm with you on that. It's only certain ones that I have, like, damn, Shay, you keep reading the same historicals by the same people, but I'm like, they're the one, I can understand it. Yeah. And, you now, know. Now, I loved Bridgerton. I didn't read the books, but I do love Bridgerton. And I yeah. did love kind of like the scandal of it and the tension of it, the historical romance aspect of it. I did like that. Yeah, looking at it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because now it's like, okay, cool. Their shit is, 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 they speaking their, their English is different. You can understand it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, maybe I'm just, I don't know, the dyslexic of it all. I don't know. But I'm just, <laughs> I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm with you on that. You just got a certain stuff. You'd be like, what the hell did they just say? <laughs> <laughs> Right, what are uh let's see all this moments? What are you amazingly good at? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I don't think I'm amazingly good at anything. I like to call myself a jack of all trades, master of none. Right. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm good at making things lighter, I guess. I'm very uncomfortable with like serious moments so i'm like let's <laughs> switch gears i i've been having serious conversations with my daughter because she's 14 and that's what we have to oh. do now and i'm like, like what that girl say oh <laughs> like i'm like i'm a whole she's like oh my god you are ridiculous i'm like but i'm funny <laughs> yes. i get it listen she's like okay i love it your daughter probably is like, oh my God, mom. But she probably would come to you and talk to you about everything, though. She's, you know, in, she's in a love-hate relationship with it. She's like, I didn't want to tell you because you'd make it weird. I'm like, I don't know how to not make it weird because that's just my personality. Right. <laughs> just cuss her out one good time. She'd be like, okay, mom, go back to the weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amen. All right, let's see here. On this moment, ah. What's one mistake you keep repeating? I keep procrastinating. Keep waiting last minute over and over and over again. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to the schedule. I'm not going to wait to the last minute to do this. And every single time. <laughs> Shit. Exactly. I'm tough, though. I mean, I'm a procrastinator to a, to a certain extent. I'd be like, man. Stuff just pops up. It's just like, damn, you be thinking of one thing and then somebody, something pulls you to something else. And then before you know it, I know for me, I have like five projects open at one time. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Shay. Yeah. They're like, Shay, that was due yesterday. I'm like, like yesterday, yesterday? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask for an extension and I still be like, I'm so bad, girl. Taxes. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. I don't do extension queen. That number, girl, I'll call that. Oh, you need an extension again, Shay? Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, the first two weeks of April were rough girl. because I had to finish the book and do my taxes because I had put them off. See. And mm -hmm. ask me if I've kept up with my bookkeeping. <laughs> girl, no. <laughs> them listen they, I'm, let me not procrastinate and write and, and calling these people and tell them what's the extension date on this thing i can turn it in because <laughs> i couldn't i mm -mm. I, I tried and listen <laughs> what i told we're gonna get here i'm gonna be like fuck <laughs> <laughs> listen, get the little message you get get the paper again <laughs> my husband used to be like babe could you please open up the irs papers I'm like 
they were like, hey, you know, didn't file your taxes. I was like, damn. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <No. sighs> struggles of it all. I know. Let me get better though. Pray for me. It's the same. Let <laughs> me get better. All right, author's moments. What's one thing you're deeply proud of, but would never put on your resume? Oh, you know, I, all the time, and it's so funny because I was told it doesn't matter. And I was like, it matters. I graduated college with a 4.0. And it don't matter. Shit. I mean, they're like, they don't really care about it. I was like, I'm wearing a button. If I ever go to an interview, I'm wearing a button. <laughs> Listen, you're like, you know, I got a four pro when I graduated from college, right? Like, oh my god, Girl, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Whatever. All right, office moments. What's something that you tried that you'll never try again? Clams, oysters, oysters. One of those two things are nasty. She's like, I don't give a damn. The oysters, I had some, I, I didn't like them at first. But I was in New Orleans and I had some fried oysters. Girl, oh <laughs> God, I was like, oh, aphrodisiac of it all. Like, it was good. I mean, you got it. If you don't like something, you got to try it at least fried. And then if you don't right. like it, you really don't like it. Then you really don't like it. So try it fried, okay? Go to New Orleans and try it fried because there yeah. you go. It's the place to have it. Yes, go to New Orleans, try it fried, and you're going to be like, you're going to hit me up and be like, Damn. Sure. <laughs> I uh, we love. were we were at a place. We went to a restaurant, and we were just we were living a bougie life. I don't know what was happening, but we went to a signing, and I was tipsy by the end. And I was like, "This doesn't even have a price on it." She goes, "If you have to ask, you can't afford it." And I was like, ah, "And I'm frugal," <laughs> so I was like, "I don't think I can do this." And we did it. I still don't know how much it was, but I'm sure it was a lot. And she had me try these oysters and she was all about it. And I was like, <laughs> well, the, well, it might have something to do with alcohol too. But so, I don't try it again. <laughs> no, don't no alcohol yet. <laughs> try it again. Fried the fried oysters. Okay. And then you know, and be like, oh, okay. Then you have your little wine and wash it down. Yeah. Sometimes any seafood. Sometimes me, I be like, "Yo, uh, this is not how any of this." <laughs> I, you know what? My Midwestern in me is like, also maybe like some ranch. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. <laughs> but no, not with that. <laughs> I figured it was something. That's I'm like, no, Fiona, no, not with that. <laughs> ranch, we make things like no, no. <laughs> All this moment. What's the last book you could not put down? You're like, oh, this shit's so good. I can't put it down. Ugh. Oh, um, Carla Sorensen's The Lie. Oh, okay. I, she's just like, she's a really good friend of mine. And, you know, when I was having a hard time reading and focusing and everything, I was like overexcited because I was like, I keep thinking about this book and I want to get back and I want to read it and. It was so good. I just, she's got a very classic writing style. So it's like a guarantee that I'm going to like, it's not going to be too much. And she writes really good tension. So I was oh, so all about it. With romance? Yes. Girl, what's her name again? Carla Sorensen, K-A-R-L-A. And she yeah. writes sports romance. That's oh. what this series is. And it is. You know, I'm a sports girl, honey. Ew. Yes. Oh, yeah. I need to, <laughs> I need to, I need to write Miss and see what Miss, Miss, Miss Carla. See what she's doing over there, honey. She's Ooh. good. She's a good writer. I absolutely love it. Love it. All right. Fiona, dead or alive. <laughs> if you were hosting a dinner party and could invite five people from any era, who would it be? Mm. Dead or alive? Let's see, definitely. So this is a science nerd in me, but Neil deGrasse Tyson. Girl, let me tell you something. <laughs> I love that man. And when he, them, them, them people try to put them charges on him, I was like, no, not the scientists. 
<laughs> Girl, he did that shit. He was like, bet. I was like, oh. I know. I was like, I don't want to know. I, don't I didn't want to know. know. I'm me too. I'm like, Lord, if he did, please, you know, bless them or get them together, you know, cover the victim. But if he didn't, I just don't want to know. I know. When it came out, I was like, oh, whew. it was just mis a misunderstanding. Yeah. <laughs> I can deal with the misunderstanding. I got it. So yes. Yeah. Um, in that same thread, Bill Nye the science guy. <laughs> oh God. Oh my god. I love it. Okay. Um okay. let's see. Uh Tiffany Rice, because I love her book. She's an author. She is my favorite ever. Oh yeah, girl, I'm about to get up on Miss Tiffany. Yes, she's now she's got um I'd follow that woman anywhere. If she wrote historical, she wrote sci-fi, I'd be like, let's go. Let's go. Oh, We're reading it. Oh yeah. As soon as I look, as soon as me and you get off, I'm going to see about her, honey. I'm going to go catch her books today. She's good. She's spicy. Um, she's really good. I always I always say her books. I'm like, I've never read a book that makes me want to be kinky and more oh. cat, like a better kinky person. Like Oh, a better Catholic in the same book. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm going to definitely get it on her books tonight. I'm going to put it on my reading rainbow list. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So that's three people. Um, you know, I think I'd want to meet. Oh. All right. So I'm on this really big organizing kick right now. Okay. Um, that I call it my pandemic hobby. <laughs> Okay. And so I am now like with bins and everything and labels. <laughs> Not right now, please. Hey. Not right now, please. Thank you. Okay, I'll help you in a minute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, probably Clea from the home edit because she's she's my girl. She does champagne. Oh, she does like, and she's funny and sarcastic and so I definitely I mean if I could have both of them I would uh -uh. I'm in the middle of an interview thank you <laughs> oh, she came over she was like who are you talking to <laughs> can you close the door please thank you um oh gosh um who else you know probably hmm Trying to think of an actress that I'd really like to be. Oh. Or an actor. You know, I probably do uh Chris Chris Pratt. I really like him. He's funny. He's down to earth. Hey, cute. He's very cute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I take any of the Avengers, any of the Marvel characters. <laughs> yes. I would have too. I would too. But that ain't no Chris Pratt. He's he's something sexy, honey. Yes. <laughs> All right, little cute stuff. Okay, that's a nice little table there, Miss Fiona. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, this is bringing us to the end of my interview. We have one question left. Okay. But before we ask our last question, we'll tell everybody um, how they can get in contact with you, all your social media handles, your website, all things Fiona, and where they can go and get your book. So um, right now, all of my books are on Amazon, and you can read them for free with a Kindle Unlimited subscription. Oh, um, I'm on basically all social media platforms. You know, I'm mostly active on the main ones of TikTok, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. I have a reader group, Fiona Cole's Lovers. Um, I love TikTok um, mainly because I just like. I like being sarcastic and funny in short little videos. So that's fun to me. I don't know if I'm doing it right. But I, I get into it. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> um, I have a newsletter, which you can check out on my website, uh, authorfionacole.com. Almost all of my social media, the name or the at is Author Fiona Cole. So you can usually find me through any of those on any of the social media or anything like that. I absolutely love it. This has been a treat, Fiona. It's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> Fiona, last question. If you were writing a book about your life, what would the title be? Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, welcome to the shit show. Listen, <laughs> listen. 
Okay. <laughs> All are welcome. I listen. It's it's crazy but fun here. <laughs> it's crazy but fun. And it's crazy. It's funny because it's true. You know it is. <laughs> I tell everybody all the time, but listen, this shit over here is, 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 no, it's, no. It's the whole shit show. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for Miss Fiona Cole, USA Today and Amazon's top 30 bestselling author. Yay. Thank you, Fiona, for being on here with us. Thank you for having me. I had so much fun. Girl, you had so much fun. I had so much fun. What are you talking about? You know, hold one second for me, okay? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, Brown Bookers, if you liked the interview, and I know you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Let everybody know that every Wednesday night, we're going to be right here at 6 o'clock. Um, and it's going to be hot. I have so many great authors coming up. You do not want to miss. You just don't want to miss them because they're great. Y'all know they're great. Whatever. <laughs> Hi, right, y'all. See y'all next week. God bless and um, be safe and stay positive. Stay positive. This is what the world needs now. Positivity. Mm-hmm. Open up your brown book, baby. It's for you. It's for us. The fantasies. No one can judge us. No one can judge us. This is false.